Hey, what's up everybody? Sage Apopham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. And we're in the garden today and the marshmallow is looking glorious in full flower. So we thought we'd come down here, shoot a video and share with you some of the core properties of this plant. So marshmallow root, its Latin name is Althea officinalis. And uh, starting off talking about the taste of this plant. So marshmallow is really cool because this is in Western herbalism, in my opinion, one of our best sweet tasting herbs. We refer to it as a sweet tonic. And, you know, our concept in, I guess, Western culture of the sweet taste, you know, we usually think of sugar, you know, like the taste of candy and really sweet sugary things. But in the context of herbal medicine, the sweet flavor is really like the taste of carbohydrate, right? So we would really think of things like rice and potatoes, yams, like starchy root vegetables, all have the sweet taste. And in Ayurvedic medicine, <clears throat> the sweet flavor is said to be composed of the earth and the water elements. This flavor is said to help to rebuild and rejuvenate, replenish and restore tissues that have become weak, uh, dehydrated, atrophied, um, malnourished essentially. And so that sweet flavor has this, has this rebuilding, restoring property, right? We see that in the earth element, it's nutrifying and the water element in the sense that it is moistening. And that sweet taste brings us to one of the core actions of, of um, marshmallow root that really is kind of the main thing that this plant does, which is that it is demulcent. Demulcents are really cool. Um, this property essentially means that <clears throat> the plant is hydrating to tissues that are dry. So this action is due in part to the presence of a category of constituents referred to as mucilaginous polysaccharides. These are long chain sugar molecules that are essentially hydrated by water. And so what happens with marshmallow root is you, you know, soak it in water over a period of, you know, overnight is usually adequate and it yields this kind of thick, slimy, mucilaginous decoction. And um, that has this incredible property of hydrating dried out tissues. Um, the demulcent property is really, really incredible. Um, it is essentially cooling excess heat irritation, aggravation in the tissues. Whenever a, a tissue in the body is overly dry, it tends to become much more prone to heat. We see that in nature, right? I mean, anytime something dries out, it burns and combusts more easily. Well, the same is true within our body. When our body experiences too much dryness, it becomes much more prone to heat. So one of the cool things about demulcents and marshmallows specifically is that that demulcent property is going to soothe and cool that excess heat and irritation while at the same time hydrating and moistening the tissue and the dryness that's behind that heat. And so from the Chinese perspective, we would refer to that pattern as yin deficiency. It's not necessarily true heat, it is heat because of an excess of dryness. And this is a really important property um, to understand about marshmallow. It really is the core thing that this plant does. So demulcent is its core action. A secondary action that we see typically associated with demulcents is emollient. And an emol whereas a demulcent uh, hydrates dryness, an emollient softens hardness. So anytime a tissue becomes dry, it tends to contract and harden. And the emollient property tends to soften that hardness. Some herbalists refer to emollient as just a topical demulcent action. So anytime a tissue on the surface becomes really dry, you put an emollient on it in order to hydrate that dryness. But technically speaking, it is the emollient property really refers to softening hardness, which tends to go alongside with moistening dryness. So those are really our core actions of uh, marshmallow root. Um, because of its demulcent property, we do see other kind of sub actions that are a result of it. 
being demulcent, um, one of which being that it's inflammation modulating, right? So as I mentioned, um, whenever a tissue becomes dry, it becomes more prone to heat. Through moistening that dryness, it tends to sedate heat and irritation. So it does modulate inflammation to an extent. And then the other really cool thing about polysaccharides is that when mucilaginous polysaccharides enter the gut, the immune system responds to them as if they were an antigen, right? An antigen is any substance that stimulates the immune system, right? It's something that the immune system sees as foreign and wants to fight off. And so marshmallow root and other plants and mushrooms that have polysaccharides tend to have an immunomodulating and sometimes a slightly immune stimulating property due to the way the immune system responds to polysaccharides within the gut. So we do see that marshmallow root does have this action on the immune system as well. So shifting into the affinities, like where in the body is this moistening, soothing, demulcent action occurring? Well, the, I would say the core affinity to this plant is the mucosal membranes. And the mucosal, mem I'm like, for some reason, I became a really big fan of mucosal membranes <laughs> over the years because they're really unique uh, tissue type. And when I'm thinking of the affinity of an herb, like some plants tend to have an affinity for a whole organ system. Other plants tend to have an aff affinity for a specific organ. And other plants sometimes have an affinity for a specific tissue type. So marshmallow root is <clears throat> one of those herbs that falls into the category of a plant with a specific affinity for a tissue type, in this case being the mucosa. So the mucosa line all of the organ systems that are exposed to the outside world. So they are considered kind of superficial or peripheral tissues whose job is to basically protect the body from invading pathogens from the outside world from getting in. So the mucosal membranes line the respiratory tract, the bronchioles, the lungs. They line the whole digestive system from the mouth all the way down to the colon. They line the genitourinary tract as well as the reproductive system. All of these systems are coated in these mu mucosal membranes that secrete mucus in order to trap foreign particulates, foreign substances from entering the body. When those mucosa become dry, right, the body becomes significantly more susceptible to pathogenic invasion, essentially. So when you take marshmallow root internally, we see that it moistens all of these mucosal membranes in the lungs, in the urinary tract, and in the digestive system, and to an extent to the reproductive system. But the main areas are respiration, digestion, <clears throat> and urinary tract. And that leads to some other actions that this plant has, right? So because of its demulcent property in the lungs, we see marshmallow oftentimes categorized as an expectorant. Because of its demulcent property in the urinary tract, we see this plant oftentimes classified as a diuretic. Because of its demulcent property in the ur in the uh, the digestive system, um, we can oftentimes see this plant classified as a laxative. Now, this is where these properties get, this is where understanding a plant in isolation gets a little bit tricky because you can look up, say, say someone has a cough and we say, okay, well, someone has a cough. The main herbal action we typically use for a cough is an expectorant. So you go to your herb book, you look up expectorants and you get this big list of expectorant herbs. You see Osha and Lobelia and Elecampane and Marshmallow and Licorice and Pleurisy Root and Whorehound, right? Well, those are all way totally really different herbs. And so if you just pick an expectorant willy nilly, um, you run the risk of choosing the wrong herb. What kind of expectorant is marshmallow? It's a demulcent expectorant. It's a hydrating, moistening expectorant. Well, what would happen if you gave that kind of an expectorant to someone that's got a really wet, phlegmatic, damp cough? It can aggravate that problem. So this is where the energetics become very important. Um, and so the overall energetic profile for marshmallow root is its effect on temperature is slightly cooling. I say slightly cooling because it's cooling to heat and irritation when it's due to dryness, but this is not a plant that's going to make someone overly cold. Like 
I think anyone can take marshmallow root and it's not going to make you constitutionally cold. Um, it's, it's very mild and it's really cooling due to excess dryness. So it's effect on moisture there being moistening, obviously. Uh, so it's a cooling moistening remedy and it doesn't really have too much of an effect that I've found on tone. It's not overly relaxant. It's not super astringent. Um, and it's not overly stimulating. So here we see a, a, a definitely key moistening remedy with a little bit of a uh, of a cooling action. So that moistening property is like the key to understanding how to use this plant properly. Um, we don't just use it as any old diuretic. We use it as a diuretic when there's too much heat irritation, burning and dryness in the urinary tract. We don't use it just as any old laxative, right? If if someone has, uh, you know, constipation, for example, but they've got, you know, really sluggish digestion, they've got dampness accumulating in there, they've got cold in the digestive system, marshmallow could very well aggravate that type of problem. It's when there's constipation because dryness, right? The stool's dry, hard, compact, um, they're straining, things like that. So it's that's the key specific indication for this plant is dryness, really any kind of dryness in the lungs, urinary tract, digestion, dryness on the skin, um, any type of irritation, and then heat patterns. So it's a really, really excellent remedy for excess heat, especially in the upper GI. So when we have irritation in the um in the esophagus things like acid reflux burning ulceration um it's also a great vulnerary too so um as a wound healing agent it can be useful for dry wounds topically on the skin but also internally in the digestive system so we see that with ulceration we see that with things like GERD we see that with things like leaky gut syndrome um, it, it helps to to heal wounds through sedating heat and inflammation and moistening dryness and through supporting the local immunological response within the tissues there so so these are really the, the main keys for kind of understanding marshmallow holistically. Uh, we use the root of the plant and um, we're going to shift over to Whitney here. She's going to talk about growing this remedy, a little bit about the harvesting and preparation. And then I'll come back and talk about some of the astrological dynamics of marshmallow root. All right. So um, marshmallow, as uh, Sage was saying, Althea officinalis is native to Europe. Um, it is a pretty hardy herb. So I grew these from seeds. Uh, if you're gonna grow from seeds, then you wanna um, scarify the seeds a little bit, which means just to gently rub them on a little bit of sandpaper and it kind of opens up that outer membrane on the seed to help increase germination. Uh, they do well with uh, starting the seeds in the cold early spring. So. That is one way you can grow them. You can also grow them by uh, root, like taking the little root cuttings or uh, cuttings of the plant to grow them that way too. Um, marshmallow really, uh, Sage has been talking about the moist property. This plant does really well in moist environments. So um, we were in, this whole area was flooded this winter and it was sitting in standing water for months and it did really well. So it can handle swampy, boggy environments, but um, it also does well in full sun like this. So you don't have to have a super boggy area. It just likes to be moist um, as everything about this plant is that moisture. And if you've ever, this plant is in the mallow family. So it has flowers look like little tiny hollyhocks. It's beautiful, soft leaves. It's just, it's, it's a really a uh, sensory plant in that way. It's really just lovely to touch and you can feel it. So the leaves can also be harvested when they're in flower and the flowers too, you can just make a cold infusion and you'll get a nice uh, like mucilaginous kind of tea like that. So you can, you can use them fresh like that. I've never dried them, but I, you can also dry the leaves, but the root is the main part that we would harvest. And these plants are 
three years old. Um, so you would want to give the plant about two to three years to develop a nice root before you harvested them. So you'd wait till the plant dies all the way back in the fall and then you could dig up the root or in early spring before the plant starts sprouting again. And um, you would want to cut up the roots and if you're gonna preserve them, you'd wanna dry them. So you'd probably wanna put them in a dehydrator so they actually get dried out because uh, this plant is so mucilaginous and so moist, it's gonna need help, you know, warm conditions to dry out. And then in, you can also uh, you make an infusion of the fresh roots if you wanted, but to preserve it, if you're gonna dry it and have some dried roots cut up for later on, you can just make a cold infusion. So that means, you know, an infusion usually would be pouring hot water over herbs to make a tea. Well, this plant does really well just with cold water. So you can put some of the root in some cold water and let it sit overnight or for, you know, a handful of hours and you'll notice that it starts getting this slimy quality. You know, because of that slimy quality, you actually don't want to tincture marshmallow. We made the mistake of trying that out once and it was pretty hilarious. It made this like goopy, slimy tincture that um, almost kind of coagulated and it was kind of a mess. It was something I think Sage's teachers had told him like, yeah, you don't tincture marshmallow. And then he was like, well, I'm going to try it anyway. And then we find out why. So it doesn't do well. The medicine really comes out in water, which is, again, really what this plant is all about, that hydration. And um, I have, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. So I'm going to share some of our fifth key of understanding herbs holistically and talk a little bit about some of the specific indications as well as kind of some of the signatures and some of the more archetypal dynamics around this plant. So um, one of the things that I always like to say the key of this herb of really understanding it is, is as we've talked about a lot moistening properties, right? And we see that really in, as Whitney was talking about the herb, how it really can grow in very damp environments. We also see that in the signature just of the softness of this plant. Like this plant, the leaves of this plant are so incredibly soft. And I think that's a really great signature for showing that emollient property, how it softens hardness, um, and also how it's um, really bringing that softness into the tissues and where, where tissues have dried and hardened. And that's an aspect of one of the main tissue states that this remedy treats, which is the dry atrophy tissue state. And when a tissue becomes atrophic, it means that it's starting to like literally lose some of its functioning. Um, atrophic tissues are typically very emaciated, they're malnourished, um, and they become dry and hard. And so, so there's something about the softness of this plant that to me, that's a really nice signature for that. So then when we're, and then, and then on the other side of it, there's also the, the psychological indication for this plant to me, which everything about this plant is for people that are dry. And I think it's for when there's like any, an emotional state of dryness where you're so depleted and malnourished. And then there's just this, like, there's this rigidity, there's this stuckness, there's this hardness kind of in the emotional pattern as well. That's like, it's the, the pattern in the body is then reflecting up into the emotional and the psychological pattern. So there's this like dryness and this hardness and this kind of inflexibility in the marshmallow person. And that kind of brings us to some of the astrological correlations to this plant. To me, marshmallow is like the archetypal lunar remedy, right? So I think of this as a moon ruled plant and that just applies on so many levels. We see it in the signature of the plant and how the underside of the leaves has that very silvery kind of white silvery color. We see that in the flowers and they're really kind of like creamy white milky coloration with that little bit of purple going on in there as well. And, and that just that silvery color to this plant is a distinct lunar signature. The softness, the way in which it likes to grow in moist environments, the way that it has the demulcent property and is effective on the mucosal membranes. The mucosal membranes are ruled by the moon. Moisture is ruled by the moon. Mucus secretions are ruled by the moon. Really all, like the whole moon's medicinal property is all about moisture and hydration. And of course, that's like the main pattern that we see within this plant. So that is a very distinct lunar property 
that we have here and the way that it is bringing moisture and bringing life. Like the moon rules the stomach as well. And that's the, the, the organ of reception, right? It's what's receiving the food and it's that that dynamic of nourishment and absorption, right? It's absorbing nutrition, it's nourishing and, and building and moistening tissues. That's kind of like what are the core medicinal virtues of the moon is, and that's essentially exactly what marshmallow does. So it's a, a very uh, powerful correspondence here with this plant. Elementally speaking, um, I think of it as a water element plant, really for all the same reasons. Um, the water element rules the mucosa, the water element rules the, um, the urinary tract, the water element rules the reproductive systems. Um, so many areas of the body that this plant influences are also governed by the water element. It's also interesting to note that this plant doesn't tincture well, right? The only real way to prepare this herb is in water. Um, and, and one of the things about that in terms of the preparation is that uh, there's a variety of polysaccharides in marshmallow roots, some of which are soluble in warm water, some of which are soluble in cold water. And as Whitney was talking about, the cold water extract really is the most optimal way to prepare this remedy or to dry it, powder it, and then mix the powder in some water and take it that way. Uh, tincturing, it just doesn't really yield well to tincturing at all. You can try it, um, but it's kind of a waste of your time. <laughs> it's much better to just do it in water and have the dried, the dried herb on hand or the powder. So these are some of the more of the archetypal reflections of this plant in the way that it relates to the planets and to the elements. And hopefully this helps provide a little bit of clarity and understanding for you in terms of how to understand and work with marshmallow root holistically. Again, I just think this is an indispensable plant. Um, you know, the, the pattern of, I've heard a lot of herbalists talk about this, especially those that are a little more versed in Chinese medicine, <clears throat> talking about how the pattern of yin deficiency is rampant in our modern culture, especially within the kidneys. People are deficient, people are weak, people are tired, people are malnourished, people are needing that kind of rejuvenation and rebuilding and restoration, specifically of, <clears throat> of yin, of those fluid components of the body and I think marshmallow is just a, a really a really important remedy for us to understand how to work with as herbalists especially you know in the modern day and age of rampant yin deficiency but also with so many gut problems that people face leaky gut syndrome antibiotic trauma in the gut um, immunological things going on in the gut I mean marshmallow is incredibly healing for digestive health. Um, I just think this is a, a, a good plant for you to know and, and understand. So thanks so much for joining me here in this episode. Hopefully you learned something good. Be sure to hit the like button if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to the podcast, subscribe and all that. And uh, head on over to our blog at evolutionaryherbalism.com for more free videos and training over there. And until the next one, take care and be well.